I know myself, <laughs> my reading of the Quran and understanding of the Quran, how I'm understanding, how much work I'm doing. So whatever happened to Muhammad, he has to go and ask from somebody. And his wife also, you know, and that is what they, I said, the point, amazing thing is when these people, so I don't know who are these people who put them on the, on the YouTube, the same narration what you believe, you get angry. And that's all in traditions. And we have to believe and then we believe and then we get angry also. Then why, why, in the first place, not in the book, God has not written down. We should not believe it. Yeah. Well, you were going to answer my question. Answer the question. Yeah, I'll answer, but you know, you are again trying to. I was answering my question. Yeah. Trying. Oh, you're a question. Okay, okay. okay. I asked him. I, half an hour ago, I asked him. And uh, the moment I start, somebody asked another. You see, the 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 question being asked is that did Muhammad Sallam ascend into the skies? That's the question. The mirage. That's the question. Did he ascend into the sky? Because normally people believe he ascended into the skies and he met so many yeah. on the first uh, sky there was somebody a seventh sky <laughs> and then finally met God Almighty and he came back and in, in a fraction of a second that's the question now th normally they refer to Surah chapter 17 Surah Isra 17 verse verse okay so if, if may I have this one please okay yes, go ahead, now yeah. this is Subhan Ladi Asra Bi Abdi Layla Min Al Masjid Haram Glory to God, glory to Him who did take His servant from the sacred mosque to a further mosque and whose precedence we bless. We bless the surrounding of the uh, Aqsa Mosque. Al Aqsa Mosque. This is what the verse is saying it. You know this verse. No, no, but, but you know, you have heard this. This is, this is the verse they make uh, uh, a concept that he ascended into the skies. Right. Okay? This is the verse. Can I have two glasses? Can you, can you see this two glasses, yeah. all of you? <laughs> Why I'm demonstrating to, so that you can, you know, people listen to read something and they don't get it. Glory to God who did take a servant from the sacred mosque. You imagine your mind, where is the sacred mosque? No, 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 Masjid Al-Aqsa, sacred mosque is Masjid Al-Haram. Oh, yeah, yeah. That is in Mecca. Okay. Mecca, yeah. Mecca, Masjid Al-Haram. Jerusalem. Yeah, Mecca to Jerusalem. That is what the people say, is Al-Aqsa is in Jerusalem. Yes. Huh? Yes. So, I'm, can you see this Masjid Al-Haram? This is Mecca. This is Jerusalem. This is Mecca Mosque. Have you been to Mecca? Have you been to Mecca? Yes. Yeah. Have you seen the Kaaba? Yeah. Yes. Have you seen the sacred mosque? Yes. Everybody has seen it? Yeah. Yes. How do you feel? The Barka is there. Barka means the blessing. Yeah. Yeah. The Quran says, yeah. That is the first house made by God Almighty. It is a place of blessing. In Arabic is Mubarak. Mubarak means the place of blessing. This is Masjid Ram, Mecca. Blessing. Now he is moving towards, Allah uh, says, glory to him who did take his servant from the sacred mosque by night towards Al-Aqsa. Now we will not say what, this is Masjid Ram, this is Al-Aqsa. But the description or the address of Al-Aqsa is described in the very ayat. Not Jerusalem, you know Jerusalem. Everybody knows Jerusalem. What Allah describes the mosque description by ayat, Alladi barakna hawlahu. We will bless the surroundings of Al Aqsa Mosque. From the sacred mosque, which is blessed, is going towards a, another mosque in the Jerusalem, that is what people say, and the surroundings of that mosque Allah will bless. Now, my question to you is. Does the Al-Aqsa Jerusalem Mosque, can we see the blessing as we see the blessing in Masjid Al-Ram? You tell me. You tell me. I haven't been to Aqsa. But you have been to Masjid Al-Ram. But you have seen on TV Al-Aqsa Mosque. Do you see that, that, that Al-Aqsa yeah. Masjid Al-Ram every day you see on TV? And do you see the Masjid Al-Aqsa the same? You won't day? get the same feeling. No, same blessing you can't see. Na? Can you see? No blessing there. No blessing there. 
no blessing there. Now all of us agree, you also, that there is no blessing in Al-Aqsa in Jerusalem. Huh? But God's ayat is never wrong. What? God's ayat is, Allah never speaks wrong. He speaks the truth. Maybe our understanding is weak. So now, everybody will think in their mind. But don't answer, please. Please do not answer. Please do not answer. Because I will, I will show you thus now. I will show you just now how we all will arrive to the truth of Al-Aqsa Mosque. Because from here he ascended to the skies. So we have to understand this Al-Aqsa Al Mosque is where. Please do not answer. No, no. When I will say, what I will say, all of you have understood that this Al-Aqsa is not blessed as Masjid Haram, Mecca is blessed. We can't see the blessing at all. And Allah cannot speak the false. So I am putting a question in your mind. Do not answer. Do not answer. <laughs> the question is that after sacred mosque, after Mecca, which is blessed mosque, which mosque in your mind, don't answer, which mosque is blessed as it is blessed, similar to Masjid Ram, today also. Muhammad Sallallahu went from Mecca to that mosque which is blessed today also and will remain till the doomsday. Did you got it? You got it? In your mind, did you, do you know that mosque that Muhammad Sallallahu went from Mecca to another father's mosque and it is blessed today also. Same blessing as like here. Blessing Mecca and there is blessing there also. You got that mosque in your mind? You got it? Now speak. What do you, what do you call this mosque? Aksa. No, I know Aksa. <laughs> but today what people say, this al in Jerusalem is not blessed. You know that it's not blessed. I don't know. It's not like, it's not like Masjid Ram. Of course not. Yeah. Achha, now, now which mosque is blessed like Masjid Ram? You got the answer in your, in your, in your yeah. mind is there. But you are afraid to speak up. Don't be afraid. They all know this. Come on, they all know this. Which is blessed like this. Have you been to Mecca and Mecca? Yeah, yeah. Where? You went to? Um, I went recently to five, three, five years ago. So what, where did you go? Well, we went to Mecca, to Masjid. Haram, you saw that Masjid. Mm -hmm. And another mosque you saw? Another mosque you saw? Yes. Did you saw the another mosque? Well, she got it, no? Oh, no. No, she got it, but no, no. she will not speak it. Because she's going to speak it, then she'll get all in the night the dreams. The dream will say, I I, said I don't remember really. You don't remember that most? Hmm? You don't remember? You got the answer, everybody, no? You want to say what I think? No, no, you, I know everybody got the answer, but she doesn't want to speak. Why? I don't know why she doesn't. No, she, you have to, I don't think she understood, otherwise she would have said it. Okay. He's, he's asking. Yeah, yeah very nice. The, you, the most, yeah. <laughs> Which another mosque is blessed? Not Al-Aqsa. Jerusalem mosque. Is blessed as, 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 as the same intensity as that. Yeah, I can't think of any other mosque as blessed as that. <coughs> Which one? No, there's the, uh, the mosque in Kaaba, surrounding the Kaaba, right? That is blessed. Yeah. And after that, there is another mosque which is similar blessing like this, because Allah says. Glory to him who did only take uh, good take his you want, it, you want it only in Mecca, not anywhere else. No, I didn't say Mecca. No, no. From Mecca he went. Yeah. From Mecca he's going towards another mosque, which Allah has blessed. And he mm. went from Mecca to uh, that. Medina. And the mosque name is? Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. You people got it, no? Yeah. Yeah. Masjid in Nabi. Yeah. Ah. You knew it all the time. That's why Masjid in Nabi and yeah. yeah. of course Masjid. Yeah. So now, 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 now we come to the back question or question. So it means they are lying. He never went to Jerusalem. He went to Masjid he, he Nabi. And from there he never ascended. He went from glory. I will read again. Subhanalladhi asra bi abdihi layla min al masjid haram. Glory to him who did take his servant from the sacred mosque. Ilal masjid al-Aqsa. Towards the al-Aqsa mosque. Alladhi barakna hawlaw. And we have blessed the surroundings. And we know Masjid Nabi is blessed. As till, till the doomsday will be blessed. Now, Al-Aqsa, there is another verse in Surah, uh, you open this uh, Surah, Surah Tawbah 9, 107. 
there's an, now I'm reading another mosque. Tell me which mosque is. Now, وَالَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا مَسْجِدًا ذِرَارًا كُفْرًا وَتَفْرِيقًا بَيْنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَإِسْعَادَ لِمَنْ حَارَبَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ مِنْ قَبَلْ وَلَا يَحْلِفُنَّ إِنَّ أَرَدْنَا إِلَّا الْحُسْنَ وَاللَّهُ يَشْهَدُ إِنَّهُمْ لَكَادِبُونَ Now God says in the world today and all time there are people who are holding fast to a mosque وَالَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا مَسْجِدًا The purpose of holding fast to that mosque is ذِرَارَا to, to, to create loss 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 The نُقْسَان ذِرَارًا كُفْرًا To do kufr To reject وَتَفْرِيقًا بَيْنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And to, to disunite the believers وَإِسْعَادَ لِمَنْ حَارَبَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ مَنْ قَبَلْ And they are making a base to fight a war against Allah and His Messenger. There is a mosque which people are holding fast. I am reading ayat. Look, وَالَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا مَسْجِدًا And they are holding fast to a mosque which purpose for that is first is the loss to create loss to Islam then create a kufr rejection and to, to make a war against Allah and His Messenger from before. And then they say, وَلَا يَحْلِفُنَّا إِنْ أَرَدْنَا إِلَّا الْحُسْنَى And they, 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 Halaf, you understand, Halaf, they, they swear that by God, our intentions is good. And Allah, bear witness, they are liars. Mm-hmm. So there is a must by, by today, people are holding fast to create disharmony, to create war against Allah and His Messenger, like you cannot see peace in Israel. Never! This is, ayat says that. Reason, it is because of that mosque, they have created this mosque as they are holding fast to a mosque, that this is our place. But Quran does speak about that mosque. Quran speaks about mosque to create disunity among the believers. Believers are divided that this is our mosque, Al-Aqsa. It is not ours. Al-Aqsa is in Medina, which you can see the blessing. Just now you see the blessing? This is a, is, is a mosque of disunity, to disunite the believers, to create wars against Allah and His Messenger from the day. And from the day I was born, I'm, I'm not much, maybe, maybe some people are than you are elder than me. Have you seen uh, peace in that area? No, since no. 1949, no peace. So Quran says you will keep on fighting because they are using that mosque as a base to fight wars. You can read this, you can... can No, no, Al-Aqsa is in... No, 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 Masjid al-Nabi, we say Masjid al-Nabi because we say mankind. The Quran refers to that as Al-Aqsa in Medina. But there's a, this is Masjid al-Zarar, a Masjid, a, a mosque which is creating confusion among the Muslim world. Jerusalem. Jerusalem mosque. You can call this a Jerusalem mosque. Where people are disunited, believers are disunited on this and their war is being produced by because of this mosque. That's Quran. I'm, I'm reading. Just read, 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 read. I will read now. Look. And there are those who put up a mosque by way of mischief and infidelity to disunite the believers and in preparation for one who war against Allah and His Messenger from before. They will indeed swear that their intention is nothing but good. But Allah does declare that they are certi- certainly liars. Later it is exposed. They, you know, how much wars we had. And this will never be a peace in that land because the book says it. Look, it says, now is a God said, never you Muslims stand thou forth therein. Do not go and stand that mosque. There is a mosque whose foundation was laid down from the first day, Masjid al-Haram. On piety it is more worthy of standing forth for prayer therein. In there are men who love to be purified for Allah love those who make themselves purified. Which is then best? Allah is comparing this mosque and that Jerusalem mosque. Which then is best? Is that he lays his foundation on piety of Allah and his good pleasure or he lays that his foundation on undermined sand cliff ready to crumble to pieces and Allah uh, and it does crumble to pieces with him into the fire of hell and Allah guides not the people who do wrong. The foundation of those who so built is never free from suspicion and shakiness in their hearts, until their hearts are cut to pieces and Allah is all knowing wise. Now this, I have, your question was that did he ascend it into the skies? Now Quran doesn't speak about ascending into the skies. He refers from one mosque to another mosque and who's, who's, who is who he blessed. So now if, if we know that from in the history they say he went to Jerusalem and from Jerusalem he went into the skies. That is all in history. 
in tradition. But if I just now explain that he never went to Jerusalem, he went to Medina. We all know that he went to Medina. That that mosque is blessed. Mecca mosque and Medina mosque are blessed, and the similarity is there with the blessing. The Jerusalem mosque is to create this harmony, to disunite the believers, and it is describing this mosque, and people are holding fast to it. This is also new, na? This is absolutely new. Oh, yeah. Absolutely new things yeah. coming forward. The, the first uh, ayat that you read mm. from again uh, from Haram to yeah. The, you want to read to yeah, read, just read that? Yeah, seventeen one. Glory to Allah, who did take His servant for a journey by night from the sacred mosque to a further mosque, whose the surroundings we did bless. Or in Arabic, if I show you Allah di barakna haulau, in order that we might show Him some of our ayats, for He is the one who hears and sees. So He went from Mecca to Medina, and that Medina mosque is blessed, as this mosque is blessed, until the doomsday it will be blessed, and the other mosque which is in Jerusalem will be based on fighting, killing, and bloodshed. No mention of Al-Aqsa. Quran is Allah. Quran is Allah. Quran is Allah. Quran is Allah. That is the most great reason. No, no, you want to know in Arabic, Subhanallah, the Asra, the Abdi, Layla, Mil Masiharam, Ilal Masil Aqsa. Masil Aqsa is translated as furthest mosque. Aqsa is translated as the furthest mosque. You see, he translated the Al Aqsa as furthest mosque. Aqsa is in Arabic, it's there. We can't we can't throw this al Aqsa. It's an Arabic is there, but people translated the like sacred mosque, uh, Masjid al Haram. Masjid al Haram is sacred mosque. Mm -hmm. Al Aqsa is the farthest mosque. Okay. And but the farthest mosque, there are many al Aqsa's in the world. Oh, Even okay. in Pakistan, there are al Aqsa mosques. So the the the, the 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 description of the al Aqsa is by the surrounding is blessed, and the blessing is similar to Masjid al Haram. So that is the address. And I, I would like to exp uh, add to your knowledge. Mm. Uh, you've been to Mecca, right? You all have been to Mecca. If you go there and you see on the Mecca Masjid al Haram, there is nowhere written Masjid al Haram. No, it's not written. Why not? Because the Quran has described it. We all know that is Masjid al Haram. And if you go to Medina Mosque, there is no written Masjid al Nabi. No. Because this is Al Aqsa. Quran has written. You identify that is Al Aqsa. And if you go to Jerusalem Mosque, there is no written as Masjid al Zarar or Al Aqsa. There it is Masjid al Zarar. That, in, that is also not written Masjid al Aqsa. But now historians have this is politics. But don't you think this is the problem with Islam that everything has been twisted and turned so much that we have such a bad name of Islam in the world? Because we are not. I mean, the correct messages is not going to the ignorant people. Look at the madrasas in Pakistan. They are creating these little children who have become suicide bombers. They don't know anything. I mean, so isn't it our duty to somehow reach those people and try to improve something like that? No, no, no. You give me money, I'm promote this all over the world. We won't do that. Harsh. We will just criticize. But where, where are all the other Muslim countries? No, no, no. I am telling you, the, I, before I started this, all politics. This religion or any religion is based on politics. And Pol why Islam so much? Islam is used politically from the from the day Islam came into existence. <laughs> Believe me, yeah, because it is the only true religion, and it is the only religion that is criticized. You know, nobody why? criticizes Christianity. Nobody why? criticizes why? Hinduism. Not today. All the time from the history. Yeah, because because it is true. Everybody knows this. Christianity and Islam are always at loggerheads. No, 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 fighting. Christianity. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Because they they are afraid of Islam. Nobody is afraid of Islam. I think so. Christian. Actually, there is a fight against the, the Quran. Speak. The Quran says, "Wakul jal haq wa zakal baatil nur kaan The Muslims are anyway creating the, such a bad name for Islam. It is not the Muslims. It is the political people. Who but are they doing. are Muslims. No, no, you are not getting yeah. that. The, the unfortunate part is they are killing themselves to each other. Who? You know? The Muslims. They are pulling. Look at the Shias and the Sunnis fighting in the masjid. Shias are killing Muslims. No, no, I can explain if you like, if you want to get, if you want to I know. know. Uh, no, I can explain everything. A religion is the most powerful weapon to use by politicians because, you know, it, it can raise them emotionally so much they can no, do no. anything. No, no. The, the, why the, can't the other people... No, let us see Muslims, Shias and Sunni. Let, let us see the first of all, does that 
the cause of root cause of event of the Shiaism, does it speak? Because the Quran doesn't allow Shiaism. No, no, I'm talking about those, I'm not talking about Shia, I'm talking about does that event that took place in, 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 in yeah. the Shia, that, that, that is why the Shiaism came into existence, the, the slaughtering of Hazrat Imam Hussain, that is the reason, no? <laughs> that is the reason. So now Quran doesn't speak about that. Quran doesn't speak about Hazrat Ali. Quran doesn't speak about Abu Bakr, nor Umar, nor Asma. Nobody, nothing he speaks about. He speaks about Jesus, he speaks about Moses, about Noah, about Abraham. But now we people, Muslims, so-called labeled Muslim, will talk about those people which Allah doesn't speak about. We will not talk about Moses, we will not talk about Noah, we won't talk about Abraham, but we know the Bara Imams, or the 11th, 70 Imams, or 30 Imams, or Fulana Imams, which Allah never spoke about. So the problem lies within you people, not with Quran or with Islam. So we have created our own problem and we are fighting for our own, own Imams. You, we did it. God never said, never, God said, we made Ibrahim the Imam. Ibrahim was made Imam, nobody knows Ibrahim was Imam. Then Khalifa was, Dawud al-Islam was made Khalifa. But we don't know about Khalifa, but we know Abu Bakr Naim, Abu Muhammad for Khalifa. Which Allah doesn't speak about. But see, even in Christianity, they have all this, but they don't fight like us. Who, who says that? Protestant and Catholics, they did fight. But look, the way the Islam is fighting, it's terrible. No, Islam, all over. Islam is not fighting anywhere. You, you, if you want to know, I Islam can Islam means Muslims killing each other, hmm. killing other people. I mean, it's where does in the Quran it says that you kill people? Who? Where does in Quran it says that you should just go and kill people? Why are you asking me? I am teaching Quran. <laughs> then why can't we do something about why are the Muslims doing all this? I am telling you, no, again you are saying the Muslims, the Muslims don't do all these things. I am telling you that if you understand who is a Muslim in the nearness of God, he cannot do all this. It is the label that you are working, you are, you are working with a label. And I tell you, I told you that beginning, uh, beginningly I explained to you the beauty is that we are so ignorant of our own book, we listen to our scholars. So those scholars are being, now I am telling you, these scholars are being trained to educate you to become like this. You should take all the scholars and No, no, who are those scholars? Who are the, no, you must understand who are those scholars. No, no, I am telling you who are those scholars. You must understand they are the, no, they are those people who are being trained to create disharmony in the world in the name of Islam. They are trained to do that. So you say, down to America, down to America, big beard and a, a Dharma is saying that. You think he's a Muslim? He's not a Muslim. He's no, been, no, no, but he's I been, really find he's it. He's been plotted against us so that you say, yeah, this guy's talking, he's a good man, he's going against Americans. He is plotted. You will never see him killed because he is the man who, who, who initiated this. All political games are going on in the world. So, so what you're basically saying is that any man that um, <laughs> thought he was an Islamic Muslim that did wrong by somebody else without hit, having anything done to him first really isn't a real Muslim. He isn't a real Islamic Muslim. He doesn't Muslim. know. He doesn't know. Okay, that's what I'm saying. He doesn't. He hasn't. He doesn't understand, or he doesn't know. No, he doesn't even. He's just he, could, he could be that same guy that, that says he understands the Quran because he read it in Arabic, but doesn't understand. It. Ah, and that is motivated by the guys you're talking about. You said the guys you're talking about. So now these guys, the big guys, you know, put a gun to this. Look, you go to this Afghanistan, make them Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, and kill somebody's head. So now I'm not blaming. I'm saying this is how it works. It is not the Muslims cannot do all this. I'm talking about the Muslim in the nearness of God. Don't take me those Muslims you are talking about Pakistani Muslim, Iranian Muslim, Afghanistan, Saudi Arabia. I'm talking about the Muslim in the nearness of God who submits to the will of God and he really practices ayahs. He can never open. He says he's ready to kill me. So he God's would, never going to forgive them? How can he forgive them? So, so there's, so if he asks for forgiveness, suppose, if somebody does wrong something, and he realizes after knowing Quranic ayahs, he understands that, if he asks for forgiveness, of course he will forgive us. God. But if he, if he doesn't ask for forgiveness and he still keep on doing then he will not forgive. So what, for, if, he, what if he kills an innocent child? Still? Knowing that he's going to do it. So it, it God's going to be like, as long as you ask for forgiveness, I'm going to give it to you? No, no, God will forgive you whether you kill an innocent person. He will not forgive you, first of all, a, a layman, like for example, an ignorant man. He kills an innocent guy and does anything, Allah will forgive you if you ask forgiveness. But if you are a believer, you already know Zaya. So, like for example, me, I know Quran and I practice. If I kill deliberately a believer, 
I am not forgiven. Because I know the man is a good person, is a believer in the nearness of God, and I myself is a good believer and a practicing Muslim, and if I kill that person, I will not be forgiven. But an ignorant man kills somebody, a believer, he kills some, a believer, and he asks for forgiveness, God will forgive. Because he knows he, he, he was a negro. So it's in these guys' best interest to be pretty ignorant then. No, but, he, no, but he'll be forgiven, right? Well, he'll be forgiven because he's ignorant. <laughs> like, you just like you said. Yeah, like, of course. If he understood what he said, yeah. he wouldn't, I mean, I guess he, he could still do whatever he wanted. No, no, I mean, I mean like, the, 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 the one who knows, the, in the Quran, the, 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 the story is the same in the Bible, which uh, a person, uh, 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 Adam's two sons, in the nearest of one was near to God and the other was wrong. The wrong who was wrong, he wanted to kill the one who was good. In the Quran, I'm talking about, right? So he kills the good one. But before he kills, he said, "I want to kill you." He said, "Okay, if you want to kill me, kill me. I won't. I won't even defend myself." That is Islam. I mean, if you want to kill me because I am near to God, I have achieved salvation to God. You want to kill me? Kill me. Mm. So he is ready to kill in the Quran, and he, he kills him. So the one who kills, he doesn't get forgiveness, but the one who is being killed gets forgiveness because anyway anyway both both of both of them going to be died actually forget about the word kill or murder everybody has to die so the other person who did not uh, got the nearness goodness from god he was jealous he wanted to kill the fellow who got goodness so he killed it so the person said i will not even defend i will get killed and he get, he got killed and he got, got good pleasures of god but he was he was not saved. And you know,